Good morning and welcome to our Pentecost service this Pentecost Sunday, the day we remember the birthday of the church. Um, it's great to have you with us online and in the building. Uh, just a few notices that uh, Zoom meeting, Wednesday prayer meeting, 7.30. Do come along and pray with us. It's uh, great just to spend those 40 minutes praying together for the needs of this town and our church and uh, the world, really. So do join us. Well, we're going over to our Bible reading and then I'll be coming to give God's word. John verses 26 and 27 and John 16 verses 4 to 15, the Passion Translation. And I will send you the divine encourager from the very presence of my Father. He will come to you, the Spirit of Truth, emanating from the Father, and he will speak to you about me. And you will tell everyone the truth about me, for you have walked with me from the start. I am telling you this now, so that when their time comes, you remember that I foretold you. I didn't tell you this in the beginning, because I was still with you. But now that I'm about to leave and go and join the one who sent me, you need to be told. Yet not only one of you are asking me where I'm going. Instead, your hearts are filled with sadness, because I've told you these things. But here's the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the divine encourager will not be released to you. But after I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will expose sin and prove that the world is wrong about God's righteousness and its judgments. Sin because they refuse to believe in who I am. God's righteousness because I'm going back to join the Father and will see me no longer. And judgment because the ruler of this dark world has already received his sentence. There is so much more I would like to say to you, but it can, it's more than you can grasp at this moment. But when the truth-giving spirit comes, he will unveil the reality of truth in him. He won't speak on his own, but only what he hears from the Father. He will reveal to you pathetically, to you what is to come. He will glorify me with them, for he will receive from me what is mine, and I reveal it to you. Everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. That's why I say that the divine encourager will receive what is mine, and reveal it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning again. Isn't it good to be here? You know, uh, it was horrible last year celebrating by ourselves. You know, I know we've had, all had lockdown birthdays probably, and they're not quite what we want them to be, are they? And uh, it's just so good to be together as family to be able to celebrate the birth of the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit. As we celebrate Pentecost, we can say happy birthday to the church. As we look back over 2,000 years to the coming Holy Spirit, God himself come down to indwell us, enrich us and enable us who have given their lives to him. The promised Holy Spirit to all those who believe, so that we can have a greater understanding and a more intimate relationship with our amazing God. To know his love and to find a new assurance of faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. We truly are a blessed people. For myself, this is one of my favourite Christian festivals. But let's go back a few steps and find out a bit about the Jewish tradition of this season. One of the things that we can observe in the New Testament is a lot of the, the big important events in the life of Jesus were mirrored in Jewish festivals. So Easter happened at Passover and the significance of that is, is really good because uh, in Passover the, the Jews celebrate the rescue out of Egypt and uh, Easter, we can celebrate the rescue of Jesus from our sins, can't we? And the Christian festival as Pentecost happens at the same time as the Jewish celebration of Shabbat, if I'm saying it right. Uh, Shabbat 
is a time when the people remember when the Torah was given, the law was given at Mount Sinai. The people had escaped from Egypt, they'd been in slavery for 400 years. Now let's think about that. Imagine 400 years of slavery. 400 years from now would have put us back into the 1600s, wouldn't it? You know, when we read it in the Bible, we think of it as being, you know, 400 years. It sounds short if you say it quick. But 400 years, these people had been crying out to God. And there was silence. It must have felt like Yahweh had left the building. But that's what had been prophesied before that they would be in Egypt for 400 years. And after 400 years, the miraculous escape from Egypt across the Red Sea, the Red Sea being parted by God and then the Egyptians who were chasing them being drowned, and then the miraculous provision of food in the desert with water coming from a rock and the manna and quail coming down. And these people who were probably bitter, broken, neglected, feeling like they've been forgotten, now come as one people again to the foot of Mount Sinai. And like any other God that has ever been, God shows up. And he shows up big style. With a mighty roar, like thunder and a cloud of smoke, and the people were told, don't go close, or else God's going to consume you. And only Moses, to start with, was allowed to go into the presence of God. How awesome is our God, that just being in his presence as sinful people would destroy us. His love and wonder is so great that we could not cope in his presence without the blood of Jesus. You know, we just think of Jesus being our friend, which in some ways is a good thing. You know, and oh, I'm going to have a word with God when I get to heaven about this. You know, and all that sort of thing. But God is an awesome God. He's a God of power and might who makes mountains tremble. About 1400 years, I'm coming off my notes, I'm just about 1400 years later, as these early believers were celebrating Pentecost or Shabbat, God shows up again. But this time, by his spirit, for all people, for all time. Who came down and anointed these disciples who had been waiting and said, now, God isn't at a distance. This awesome, powerful, mountain-shaking God is coming to you. Not only that, he's coming to indwell you by his spirit and he's going to make a difference. He's going to empower you by this Spirit to go out and tell. See, when you put fuel in a car, what do you put fuel in a car for? To make it go. And the Holy Spirit in us is to make us go. To go and tell. To be able to praise God better. To, to reveal His love more. I know I can't love like God loves, but with His help, and him inside me, all of a sudden I can find that unlovable lovable. And that might even mean myself. We can find even ourselves lovable with the help of God. You know, when I, we were young parents and Alice was a toddler, and I've used this analogy before, but I think it's such a good one, I can't help but use it again. 
When Alice was a toddler, we used to be walking through the shopping centres, and I don't know about you, but they used to be little, you know the electric cars? And the electric noddy cars, or a little horse. And uh, when, when Alice was little, she used to s skip off to these electric cars, and sit in, and play with the wheel, or sit on the horse, or whatever, and then come away quite satisfied. Well, one day, my mother was with us. And like all good grandparents, she put money in the slot. Well, Alice had never experienced this before. We were too tight to actually put money in the slot. And there was screams and wails as this thing started to shake and move and bounce her about. She'd never experienced what it was meant to do. Well, after a, a few screams and wails and she settled down, and then she started to enjoy it. The trouble was, after that, we could never go past those without actually us putting money in the slots as well. See, she had experienced the real deal and she wouldn't settle for just sitting there. And that's the same in church. We can't settle for just sitting here. The Holy Spirit is real. And he wants to empower each one of us. He wants to set us on fire. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? He wants to change our lives in a remarkable and passionate way. So that we're listening to his spirit. So that we're moving in his power. So that we're ready to receive his and know his life-changing love. And more than that, to know his forgiveness, because we need forgiveness. Because there's lots of rubbish in my life I know I need forgiveness for. God loves us preciously, tremendously, outrageously. And God wants to come by his Spirit to each one of us. Um, Chris gave us a lovely testimony on Wednesday about just um, being touched and just being steered by his spirit. So I'm just wondering, would you be able to come up and tell us, Chris? I, I have preempted him on this, so it's all right. He does know. And Chris, come and give your testimony now. And uh, I'm just standing here like this, so there's not a blank space on the field, and people can just see. So over to you, Chris. Uh, yes, um, most of you who, uh, who know me uh, know I like to be organised, I like to be planned, I like to know what's happening, don't like surprises. Well, last Wednesday, it should have been like that. I got the day planned out, morning, down to church, working party, home for lunch, uh, afternoon free, Sue, Sue goes, my wife Sue goes out in the afternoon to the uh, help at the Bassett Law Food Bank. So I've got free afternoon, uh, catch up on a few jobs, uh, soon back about four, evening meal about half past five, lifeline prayers at half past seven, bit more television, and that's it, that's the day done. Suits me, happy with that. Needless to say, last Wednesday it didn't work out like that at all. I got down to, to uh, church to help with the working party just before 10 o'clock and uh, uh, Phil assigned me a, a job to do and so I thought, well, I'll just check my phone before I get into work. Got my mobile phone out, click, click, click. Oh, it's not working. Click, click, click. <coughs> shake, shake, shake. Tap, tap, tap. Not working. Oh, no. No, 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 you can't do this to me. Uh, and it just brought back a memory of about two years ago, a similar thing happened. My phone went dead and I couldn't get into it. And it's a long story, but I ended up having to take it back to the phone shop. They tried to get into it. I lost everything on the phone, all the photographs, everything went. And I thought, oh no, not again, not again, can't happen again. So I was in a bit of a mood, shall we say. And uh, I, said, I said to Phil and uh, Ben, I said, I'm going home, I'm going home. I'm going to get this phone sorted. And so I shot off home. Not being very happy, as you can probably guess. Uh, got home uh, and 
told Sue what the situation was. So I thought, I said, right, I'm going down to the, to the farm shop. Uh, I catch the bus, I might be down there for an hour or two, so I'll go on the bus. Uh, went around the corner to the bus stop, waited five minutes, ten minutes, quarter of an hour, pacing up and down. Where's that blankety blank bus? Didn't turn up. So I thought, what's going on here? And I was getting more and more agitated. And then I thought, well, perhaps something's happening. Perhaps it's meant to be like this. And as I walked back home, I just felt a bit of a peace coming on me. I thought, well, is, is, is the Lord trying to do something here? Is the Lord trying to tell me something here? Is the Lord trying to break in to my sealed off life? So anyway, went home. Uh, we, had some, uh, we had some lunch and then uh, Sue was due to catch the bus that gets us into Worksop Town for about one o'clock. So I caught the same bus, thought I'll go to the phone shop. Wednesday, market day, bound to be busy. Uh, lunch time, bound to be busy. But anyway, I've got to get this phone sorted. So I went to the phone shop and, and as I peered around, it was empty. Nobody in the shop at all except for the, uh, for the sales assistant maybe. Uh, so I went into the shop and uh, I told her about the phone and uh, I recognised her. She was the same lady who helped sort the phone out two years ago. So I explained to her what the situation was. She looked at the phone, shook it, tapped it, put it into the charger, nothing. Wouldn't work. I thought, oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, uh, she continued and just fiddling around. Oh, it's working. It started working. I don't know what I've done, but it's working. And the phone sprang back into life. And I said, you've made my day. You really have made my day. Uh, and then, but then she said, uh, of course, it, it might happen again, you know. You might need to think about getting a, a new phone. So I said, well, okay, can you tell me what you've got in stock? What's, uh, what's equivalent to this one? And at this point, uh, the lady stands up from behind the desk and she walks over to uh, the phone display and I could see that she was in so much pain, she was really in pain and uh, I said to her, uh, I, said, I said, you look like you're really struggling this morning and she said, well I've got this, uh, I've got this hip pain, I've had it for a number of years now and then there's little light bulbs going in off in my head, pray for her, what? In the shop, pray for her. No, no, no. And I was almost hoping people were going to come in the shop then so I wouldn't have to pray for it. But they didn't, and the shop was still empty. And so I just got this sensation, pray for it, pray for it. So I said to her, um, I said, thank you for doing the phone. I said, I I'm a Christian by the way. And I said, I go to a church where we actually pray for people. And sometimes people get healed, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Can I pray for you? Instant, she said, yes. So I said, I shan't touch you, I shan't come anywhere near you. And I just prayed a simple prayer, asked the Holy Spirit to come to heal her in the name of Jesus. I rebuked this infirmity. And then I blessed her and walked out of the shop. And I felt really good. Not because uh, I was anything special, because I'd had the courage and I'd been part of the Lord's plan. And, and that was really good. So whether she got healed or not, I believe, uh, that she did get healed, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. But that was. But what I'm trying to say is, and Tim's anxious to get back and get me off here. So, but I will say, uh, we need to be open. And it was my fault of being so closed up and so uh, full of my own life and not allowing the Lord in. And I believe prophetically that we're coming into a season where this will be happening more and more often, where the Lord will be breaking into our lives and using us to do. His works. I know we've only got 15 minutes on the recorder, so I thought I'd start again. Um, but that's right, isn't it? Chris was absolutely right in that. And I believe too that we are entering into a season where we're going to see the Holy Spirit move more and more. And we, we're going to, we, we, we've even got to get with the program or we're going to miss out. I really believe that Holy Spirit wants to work more and more in works on. And one of the things, when all the people were in Sinai, one of the common things there, at, at, at the bottom of Mount Sinai, when all the Jewish people were there, they were unified, they were one. 
And one of the early Jewish rabbis talks about um, before this time, when the people were at Sinai, um, they would set up camps. Plural. Plural, is that the right word? Camps? Yeah. And it was only when they came to, uh, to the bottom of Mount Sinai it talks about them all being together and camp in a camp. Unity. And in the same way, the believers were unified, weren't they? Together as one. And I believe the Spirit moves more as we come together in unity. Not just as our church, which is really important that we stay unified, but also as the church across works up and across the country, that we need unity like nothing else. But just going back to Chris and the, thing, the, the, the three things I want to say, is when you pray for something like that, when you're prompted, one of the things, it proves three things. To start with, that lady knew that Chris believed that prayer worked. That lady also must have known that Chris was willing to step out in faith and actually do something that he felt uncomfortable about. And then the third thing is, prayer does work. So I've prayed for people who haven't been healed, but they've been more impacted by the very fact that I've been willing to pray for them than of the healing itself. And it's a way that God gets into their lives, isn't it? Because, you know, our, our prayers aren't, don't come back to us empty. God has a plan and a purpose for every prayer that we pray, if we pray along with his will. We might not see that, that purpose fulfilled, but it is being fulfilled. And we need to remember that. Now this time, it would be good if we just pray now, and uh, even if you're at home watching this uh, on YouTube, do, do pray along with us now. And, and if, you wanna, if you want to stand, then we're just going to ask for the Holy Spirit to re-empower us today. So if you'd like to stand, please stand. And we're just going to ask Holy Spirit to come. So we don't have to lay hands on people. We can do this at a distance. You know, the disciples, when, when the Holy Spirit hit the first time, ha had no hands laid on them. The Holy Spirit just came and touched each one of them. So let's now just wait on God. Heavenly Father, we just pray now that you would send your Spirit. Lord, that you would touch each one of us. Pray that you would touch and fill your children here, from the youngest to the oldest. That they would know a new freshness in their faith, that they'd start to understand the deep, deep love you have for each one of them. Lord, come now by your Spirit. Come light us afresh. Move and transform us. We pray that we'd kindle that flame so it bursts out in fire. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So, and one of the, can I just say, when you get home, you know that song we had earlier, Send the Fire? Go and find it on YouTube and then sing along with it so you can really get going at home. Because I just felt, I don't know about you, I felt so frustrated that we couldn't sing that. And it's such a great song. Thank you. Let us pray. And first, a mother's union in prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, 
as your Holy Spirit descended on Jesus at his baptism. We pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit to descend on us all. May your love come down to each one of us, filling us to overflowing with love for you. May your spirit be like a dripping tap in our lives. As the tap fills and slowly overflows, so let your spirit come and slowly fill our lives. Spirit of God, we give our lives over to you. Come, Lord, come. Change us, Lord. Make us more like you. In love for you, we pray. Amen. And then two Mother's Union prayers from Africa. And first a prayer from Kenya. May the mighty wind bear your name through cities and hamlets, by quiet valleys and silent hills and may it be known in all the land. Amen. And a prayer from Uganda. Holy Spirit, give us faith. Holy Spirit, give us hope. Holy Spirit, give us love. Revive your work in this land, beginning with me. Amen. And now a tear fund prayer for work with the poor. Thank you, Lord, that Tear Fund partners with 22 Christian development agencies around the world. They are working together to combat the long-term negative effect of COVID-19 on poor communities. Poor people often live from day to day and earn daily wages. Lockdowns have meant they could not work, so there was no income and no food or hygiene articles were coming into their homes. Many do menial jobs for very low wages and they have struggled to survive. Thank you Lord, the Integral, the Christian Alliance is making a difference and taking your love and compassion where the need is greatest. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. And now the Barnabas prayer for the persecuted church. O oh God, we thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to guide us into all truth to be our counsellor and comforter, making us strong, steadfast and bold. Help us to hear his voice and respond to his promptings. We ask this for ourselves and for our persecuted brothers and sisters, especially those who may have no access to Christian teaching or even your word or who may face enemies deliberately trying to destroy their faith in your son. May your spirit give them all they need. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen. We've had a letter from our sponsored child that we support in Kenya, Pashili, and he's full of news. He says that he and his family are well and that he has joined the university in January because he's in his 20s now and he's really enjoying it. He's made new friends but most of his classes are subject to corona restrictions. He says they've had good rains as a result of prayer. And we've prayed for, for good rains for them, so thanks to God for that. He says their livestock is healthy. And there's this lovely phrase that he, he's, uh, I brought from directly from his letter because it's beautiful. This is what he says. The pasture lands are also glittering with the sunshine rays hitting the green grass. 
He says he's going to see if he can access our services online. He says they slaughtered some animals to enjoy lots of meat at Christmas. So he's, uh, he's progressing in his life, he's going forward. So we pray for him. Father, we thank you for Pashini's progress through school and on to university. Thank you for answering prayer for good reigns and that Pashini and his family will feel safer from terrorism. Thank you for his faith in you and we pray that he will grow in faith and become a mighty servant of yours in his future life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We pray for all who have been suffering ill health recently. Those recovering from surgery and medical treatment. Those recovering from accidents and those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Especially Hazel, Rosemary and Tom after the loss of David Croucher. Please lift people you know to God in a moment of quiet. We know, Lord, that you have compassion on those who suffer and on those who mourn. Thank you that your Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans of genuine understanding and sympathy. No one can comfort, heal and encourage like your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Finally, Lord, we thank you for all your kindness love and gifts which you have showered on us during the lockdown. Thank you for your faithfulness. We pray that we will count being accepted and loved by you as our greatest gift in life and that in the coming week, wherever we go and whatever we do, we will be aware of your presence with us. Thank you that you always listen to all our prayers and that you always answer. In Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're all going to join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we moved our closing prayer. So we say this together, please. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 